Hi, welcome back. So in this video, uh, we're going to talk about some uh, kind of a new concept that we haven't really worked on yet. Um, and uh, it's really, I guess, we're, the past few videos we've been working on eighth notes, and we just introduced a new concept. We've just introduced uh, the eighth note rest. So we, there was this uh, why or, you know, why looking thing, but really we said we should think about a, a line with a flag on it. And uh, now that we kind of have this tool and we, you know, have the eighth note and we know kind of how uh, how upbeats work and where upbeats go in the, and how, you know, how, I guess how you write upbeats and stuff like that, uh, we're actually, it actually opens up a pretty big window for us uh, for kind of new exploration into an area called transcribing. Write that down. Transcribing. This is one of my favorite parts of, of music. And particularly if you're at all interested in jazz music, this is an invaluable tool. It's one of the, one of the uh, best things you can do for uh, if you're an aspiring jazz player or practicing jazz music or uh, what have you. So uh, anyway, pretty much what transcribing is, and you know, I guess uh, if you look at all the other examples we've done so far in the playlist, it's been I've uh, written down a um, I've written down an example, and most of the time it's been in four four time. I've written down an example and pretty much just made something up, made up, say like, okay, we're going to have, you know, okay, we're making this. Get rid of that making this in 4-4 four, four time, and we're going to have a quarter note, then a half note, and then two eighth notes, and and then, then kind of I've asked, well, what does this sound like? Well, let's figure it out. And that's kind of one way to do some rhythmic training and figure out, you know, just make up some rhythms and figure out what they sound like. But another way that's, uh, you know, like I said, a pretty... Uh, uh, you know, pre, it's definitely a very good thing to do. Um, good, good kind of way to have your, your brain work on this stuff is to just put on a piece of music, put on a CD and try to figure out how it would look if you wrote it down. So, um, that's what we're going to be working on today. And that's pretty much what transcribing is. And, uh, you know, what, a you know, um, what transcribing is, and we're just going to work on the rhythm right now, but transcribing is pretty much listening to a piece of music and writing it down note for note, or or just figuring it out. You don't have to write it down, but you know, I, I kind of think you should. Uh, writing down uh, writing down note for note what happens in, in the piece of music so that you could recreate it, so that you could uh, you could play it back for someone. And I do kind of want to have a little bit of an on-the-side note before we start, and hope this might just be kind of an introduction to, to uh, transcribing. Uh, I do just kind of want to say, a lot of the time, if you are, depending on what your aspirations are as a musician, if you're just kind of wanting to get into this for fun, or if you do have very professional uh, aspirations, really in any capacity, any capacity that you want a musician, you want to be a musician, you want to be musically act active, transcribing is essential, I feel. And uh, kind of the big reason for that is most of the work I do, and that, that's why I do, I'm a professional saxophone player, uh, most of what I do, all I get is CDs. I just, or, you know, I don't even get CDs anymore. I just get MP3s emailed to me. And people just tell me, learn this, learn this, learn how to play this, or learn something you could play over this. A lot of the time, you know, it doesn't, there aren't uh, necessarily saxophone parts in what I get. I just have to make up something that goes along with it. But in order to do that, I have to figure out what's going on. So transcribing is really an invaluable tool. It's really essential. Um, and that, you know, goes for kind of any any uh, level that you want to pursue music at. Like, any, you know, you don't have to be uh, Chick Corea or Michael Brecker or, you know, uh, Sonny Stitt to 
think like, oh, well, those guys transcribe. I'm not too sure if I, if I have to transcribe. I, you know, I don't know if I, if that's something I want to do. And even, I guess what I want to tell you is even, uh, whatever capacity you or whatever plans you have for your musical career, transcribing is, is essential because 99.9% .9 of the gigs you play in the, and, uh, the, um, you know, the bands you play in, they're not, they're not going to be handing you printed music. You might, you know, if you're in, uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly what your situation is when, while you're watching these videos, but if you're in high school right now and you're playing in a big band, or if you're in middle school and doing the same thing, playing in bands and orchestras and, uh, you know, jazz band and what have you, you're, you're getting handed music all the time. And, uh, really, if you want to stay musically active, uh, past, past college, that, that very rarely happens. You really don't get handed, just handed music. So, uh, anyway, that is kind of the introduction I want to give to transcribing. So I think, uh, and that's just really my opinion that, that I'm putting into this. And, uh, so hopefully you can take it for what it's worth, but I think transcribing is an, an absolutely essential tool. So anyway, let's, uh, get started. And I've chosen out an example for transcribing today, and we're just really going to try to get one measure. Now, I tested this out. This should work right now, and hopefully it still does work. Actually, let me just look at my screen capture software. Yes, it's going to still work. Okay, so this is Cannonball Adderley tune called One for daddy -O, which we have down here, and we're just going to try to get the first measure when the saxophone and the trumpet come in. We're just going to try to get the rhythm. Uh, and that, I'll tell you right now, it happens at around 17 seconds. So it doesn't happen at the beginning of the piece. We've got uh, a good amount of measures to kind of work us into it. That's just piano, drums, and bass. Uh, the first thing I just want you to think about when you listen to this, we've been working with time signatures and thinking about what, uh, uh, what, um, you know, what time signatures mean and what time signatures fit for what type of music. Uh, I want you to try to think what time signature is, is this in. That's what I really want you to think about. I'll play this a couple of times right now, and I want you to think what time signature is this music in. So anyway, here it is. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so that was the um, that that was that for the measure that my let it play a little bit longer than I wanted to, but that was the measure. It happened around 17 seconds. Here we go again with it. <laughs> So that was the measure. That's the measure we're trying to go after, right when the saxophone and the trumpet come in, and we just want to try to grab that rhythm. So I'm uh, actually kind of running out of time in this video right now, so in the next video we'll try to delve into this a bit more deeply. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.